Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid in the middle of a five speed manual swap on my E46 BMW and we're all about ready to put the transmission back in. But first I wanna just replace the bushings on the shifter fork just to kind of restore the shifter to its factory fresh feel. And I wanna show you how to do that. So let's get started. So I've got four bushings here that I need to replace. There's gonna be this little white ring that's inside of here. That's gonna have the most amount of play. You can see there's a little up and down movement inside there. So that's definitely gonna need to get replaced. Um, there is this bushing back here, and then this little bushing inside here, which I'm not entirely sure is very worn. Actually, yeah, you know, it feels, it feels pretty worn. It's kind of rotating around in there a little bit. So yeah, that one's gonna get replaced. And then there's also, this fourth one is gonna go up on the transmission, so we'll do that last, and I'll show you where that goes. But for this one, let's just, disassemble this, take this clip off here. They're gonna be these little yellow washers, for lack of a better, better word. There should be one stuck on it right there. So I'll just leave that on here. And from what I understand, let's see, we'll get this rubber bush off. Um, from what I understand, we just have to rotate this plastic disc around to the side. I don't know if it's counterclockwise or what. It looks like it's rotating in there already. Well, you know what? Let's look at the new part. We'll figure that out for sure. It's looking like there's a little ramp right here, whereas there's a stop right here. So if we turn it clockwise, that should push these little pieces in and, uh, and get it out of there. So let me... I don't wanna slip and poke my finger or poke my hand. What probably has to happen is we gotta do both at the same time. So let me sort of... <laughs> figure out how to have multiple hands here. There. That's all there is to it. Comes out like that. Okay, I'm gonna clean out the old grease and stuff that's in here. Okay, looks good there. Let's clean off the ball. Now I'm feeling some wear on this, on this shifter ball, actually feeling some notches in it. So it might've been a good idea to actually replace this. And I guess, you know, at that point I would just go short throw shifter. So I think probably what I'll do, I just didn't want to add any more expense to this, this job. You know, I wanted to, I just wanted to do it as cheaply as possible, as cheaply as I possibly could. Um, but you know what, it's, it's another DIY that I can do later on because most of you, if you're gonna install a short throw shifter, you're gonna wanna do it while the car is, or while the, while the shifter, while the transmission is still in the car. So I'll just, uh, I'll just go ahead and do that as a separate DIY a little bit down the road. But for right now, we can just use this. Just put that in and we wanna add a little bit of lithium grease. Make sure that that's down all the way. I think I haven't yet slipped this little these little bits down in. Yeah, because I think it's going to come out. Well, I can't tell if it is. It looks like it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it really looks like it wants to come out. But given the fact that it's not popping out, I suppose is a good sign. 
I want to clean this off and just make sure. Because this is just a no-name brand. Well, yeah, my parts house puts their sticker over this. Um, so I can't really tell what brand it is, but it's it's possible that it's aftermarket and it's just a little bit, it's made a little bit too tall, maybe. Because it could be that just this part right here is a little too tall on the new part and it's not snapping down. And I would like it to snap down in so that it's just locked in there. And realistically, I don't think it's going to. I don't know, it, it also does not feel like it's gonna come out. So there's that. I don't know, I think I'll run with it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's gonna come out. So, I mean, I was, was hitting it down on here and it's not popping itself out. So I think that's pretty secure. So that should be fine. It doesn't feel that great because again, because that ball is not perfectly smooth. So it doesn't feel perfect. I can feel a little bit of give in it sort of, but um, you know, that's just, uh, that's just how it is. I will definitely have to replace the little ball thing, but you know, it's going to be fine for now. So we'll just, we'll, we'll run with this. But I guess that the tip here is, I think make sure you get an OEM one of these because obviously there's some aftermarket fitment issues. So now we have this bushing on the back that just slides out. I got a replacement for that. one had this little collar on the back. We'll just run with that. And I don't know. Let me pull the new one off and put the old one back on. We'll see how much play there was in there. They feel about the same. So the new one was harder to slide off. There's maybe a slight bit more tension in this one, whatever. So now I think probably the hardest part, we got to get this one off. And the way we're going to do that is to slice it off and push it out. And I believe we're going to need to press the new one in with something like a C clamp. So yeah, I'm just going to slice off the head of that so I can push the old one out. Feels like there might be metal inside there. It might be sort of plastic over molded, like a piece of metal. So in that case, I'll just kind of cut, cut the edges off or cut the lip off. Yeah, there is definitely a little metal ring on the inside. So now we'll just be able to, hopefully we'll be able to push the new one in. All right, I got a little bit of silicone spray here. Just hit it with that and we'll see. See maybe if I can start it in by hand. I kind of doubt it. We're going to push it in and we're going to do it this way. It 
So this is turning out to be fun. Let me get a different clamp, see if it'll help. This is probably gonna be unwieldy, but. Might be slightly better. Get a little more squeezing force with it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, that was easy. So now that one's not rotating. So good thing we changed it. All right, now we can put this back together. Make sure you twist that all around and it's all seated in the slot right there. Cool, so our shift fork is good to go. Let's put this boot back on. I think we're right around there. So the last thing we wanna replace is this right here. Um, just got a new unit. There's a little bushing on the inside right here. That gets a little worn out over time. There's also this little foam disc on the inside which kind of cushions it. That gets worn out too. So we'll just pry off the little lock ring. I didn't bring my hammer, but I'll just push that pin out, okay? Thought I'd have to, to bang the pin out, but now we can just push it out. See, and that little foam disc kind of deteriorates. This one's nice and dirty. So, let's get that cleaned off. So push that new one on. We'll have to push on it, get that pin lined up. that pin leveled out. Push the little lock ring into place. Yeah, I mean that kind of, that feels way stiffer now. So there we go. That is the final part that we will need to replace. Now we can put our shift linkage back on. So to do that, we're gonna take out this pin or this lock ring. Take out one of these plastic bushings. So this is gonna go in here. Let me uh, clean that off. Okay, that'll go in there. This little pin, it's, it's normally locked down like that. We're gonna take that out. and put the bushing through. And then lock it down like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll push this bushing through. Now, okay, this is interesting. This one is a little different and I can't actually get this all the way through enough to get with, with these little plastic bushings. If I put these little plastic things on, then the pin doesn't stick through far enough in order to get the lock ring on. And I think what it is, because this, this one that I just put on, this one does have sort of an updated design. It's a little different. It's got these little, it, it almost looks like they've got built in, it's got built in spacers there. So I'm gonna take the spacer, those spacers completely out. Yeah, and it looks like that's what they want you to do. So there. 
So rotate this around, make sure it's snapped in. And I'll leave it in that position. Okay, so now we're good back here. Let's do the front. All right, so we're gonna remove the throw out bearing because we're gonna put a new one in. That's why you never wanna reuse a throw out bearing. So I think this was already detached. See, there's a little spring which keeps this, this end of the fork connected to this piece in here. Now, this piece is also something you could replace. Um, I think this one looks okay. Well, let's put it this way. I didn't get a new one for it. It's just a little, a little pivot point and it's, uh, it's made out of plastic. So you wanna put a little bit of grease in all the metal, the metal contact areas. You can tell what they are because they're the shiny parts. So it can be, be any kind of grease really. Um, we'll just use this stuff, it's handy. You don't wanna to put too much on. Um, you can also see there's a metal to metal contact area inside here. So you wanna grease that up as well. You, you don't wanna to put too much on, uh, particularly when we go to lube up the splines in here. This part doesn't so much matter because it's not rotating, you know, so that, that should be fine. But you definitely wanna put, and let me wipe this off first. In fact, let me, uh, let me spray that out. So you wanna put some grease in here too because the throw out bearing is gonna move back and forth on this shaft. So, you know, just, uh, it doesn't hurt to give a little bit of grease. That's right, lube up the shaft. You know you wanted me to say it. <laughs> right here you wanna put grease on these splines as well. This is where you don't wanna go crazy with it um, because this is gonna be spinning around and you don't wanna fling any grease off into the, um, into the disc. You know what, it would, be, it would be helpful if we had just a little, I don't know, like a little brush to kind of brush the grease in. The reason you want to lube up the splines is because the clutch disc is going to slide on those splines a little bit and you don't want the, you don't want to get that clutch disc seized onto the splines next time you go to change it. So that's uh, that's the reason you want to do that. But I would like to get something to get the, the grease down into the splines there without caking the whole thing up in grease. So let me find a little brush or something. I'm going to have to use the brush for my anti-seize because I can't find anything else but that should be fine. Also put a little bit around the tip. That's right, you wanna lube the tip where it's gonna go into the uh, pilot bearing. So now we can put our shift fork in here and you want to snap the little you can see that it's retained by just this little ring on the side here so that just snaps around this thing here of course this one doesn't want to snap in so let me snap it in by hand okay and then i'll just kind of maneuver the fork into place uh, and it came off no it didn't come off it's good so that goes there. Now we can put our new throw out bearing in. I'll grease this one up too. Just a little here, a little there, a little on this, this side, a little on the other underside. So now we just wanna put this in and you can see the flat spots right here. Those are gonna intersect with the shift fork. So they're gonna go on the top and the bottom like that. So it just slides like that. And the inside part of the bearing is what turns. So that's it. We are ready to go on. I'll probably take off just a little bit of this excess here and we'll be ready to go on. So that's it guys. Quick little video on replacing your shift fork bushings. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.